are all my super duper fantastic wonderful listeners. Welcome. I hope you loved Little House in the Big Woods. Mrs. S was going to read James and the Giant Peach, but my second graders all had copies of Stuart Little. So that is why we are going to read Stuart Little. They can follow along in their book. Other students like to sit and listen, or maybe they got a, a copy of their book at home. But I always like second graders to remember two things. E.B. White, who wrote Charlotte's Web, also wrote Stuart Little. Number two, this book was written a very long time ago. And one person used their imagination to make the movie. Mrs. Stanzik's not too thrilled with one person's imagination. I like your imagination. So I like to read a book so I can use my imagination and picture what's really going on. I know they've written a lot of other different little adventures for my friend Stuart Little, and they're very cute and they're very nice in their little movie. However, I always go back to the original story. So that's my opinion and everyone's opinion counts and matters. But just to let you know, remember, someone who made the movie said, oh, let's make it like this. The other thing Mrs. S needs you to know before we start is that the setting of our story is New York City, where there are a lot of tall apartment buildings, not little houses in our regular kind of neighborhoods here in Syracuse. So when Stuart goes on some of his adventures, he is in a big, big city with lots of people, okay? And so he gets, he's this little tiny, and here we go. It's a great story. I hope you enjoy it. Stuart Little by E.B. White. What a great imagination to think of a little boy who could be the size of a, a little mouse. Here we go. Page number one, chapter one. The title, In the Drain. When Mrs. Frederick C. Little's second son arrived, everybody noticed that he was not much bigger than a mouse. The truth of the matter was, the baby looked very much like a mouse in every way. He was only about two inches high. And he had a mouse's sharp nose, a mouse's tail, a mouse's whiskers, and the pleasant, shy manner of a mouse. Before he was many days old, he was not only looking like a mouse, but acting like one too wearing a gray hat and carrying a small cane. Mr. and Mrs. Little named him Stuart, and Mr. Little made him a tiny bed out of four clothespins and a cigarette box. Unlike most babies, Stuart could walk as soon as he was born. When he was a week old, he could climb lamps by shinnying up the cord. Mrs. Little saw right away that the infant clothes she had provided were unsuitable. So she set to work and made him a fine little blue worsted suit with patch pockets in which he could keep his handkerchief, his money, and his keys. Every morning before Stuart dressed, Mrs. Little went into his room and weighed him on a small scale which was really meant for weighing letters. At birth, Stuart could have been sent by first class mail for three cents, but his parents preferred to keep him rather than send him away. And when, at the age of a month, he had gained only a third of an ounce, his mother was so worried she sent for the doctor. Why, the doctor was delighted with Stuart and said that it was very unusual for an American family to have a mouse. He took Stuart's temperature and found it was 98.6, which is normal for a mouse. He also examined Stuart's chest and heart and looked into his ears solemnly with a flashlight. Not every doctor can look into a mouse's ear without laughing. Everything seemed to be all right, and Mrs. Little was pleased to get such a good report. Feed him up, said the doctor cheerfully as he left. Now the home of the Little family was a pleasant place near a park in New York City. In the mornings, the sun streamed in through the east windows, and all the littles were up early as a general rule. 
Stuart was a great help to his parents and to his older brother George because of his small size and because he could do things that a mouse can do and was agreeable about doing them. One day when Mrs. Little was washing out the bathtub after Mr. Little had taken a bath. <coughs> Excuse me, God bless me everybody, thank you. One day when Mrs. Little was washing out the bathtub after Mr. Little had taken a bath, she lost a ring off her finger and was horrified to discover that it had fallen down the drain. What had I better do, she cried, trying to keep the tears back. If I were you, said George, I should spend a hairpin in the shape of a fish hook and tie it onto a piece of string and try to fish the ring out with it. So Mrs. Little found a piece of string and a hairpin, and for about a half hour, she fished for the ring, but it was dark down the drain, and the hook always seemed to catch on something before she could get it down to where the ring was. What luck, inquired Mr. Little, coming into the bathroom. No luck at all, said Mrs. Little. The ring is so far down, I can't fish it up. Why don't we send Stuart down after it, suggested Mr. Little. How about it, Stuart? Would you like to try? Why, yes, I would, Stuart replied, but I think I'd better get into my old pants. I imagine it's wet down there. It's all of that, said George, who was a trifle annoyed that his hook idea hadn't worked. So Stuart slipped into his old pants and prepared to go down the drain after the ring. He decided to carry the string along with him, leaving one end in charge of his father. Now, when I jerk three times on the string, that means he's going to pull it just a little bit. Pull me up, he said. And while Mr. Little knelt in the tub, Stuart slid easily down the drain and was lost to view. In a minute or so, there came three quick jerks on the string and Mr. Little carefully hauled it up. And there at the end was Stuart with the ring safely around his neck. Oh, my brave little son, said Mrs. Little proudly as she kissed Stuart and thanked him. How was it down there? asked Mr. Little, who was always curious to know about places he had never been to. Oh, it was all right, said Stuart. But the truth was the drain had made him very slimy and it was necessary for him to take a bath and sprinkle himself with a bit of his mother's violet water before he felt like himself again. Everybody in the family thought he had been awfully good about the whole thing. And there's Stuart spraying himself with some of his mom's perfume. Chapter two we'll read tomorrow and it is called Home Problems. Every chapter Stuart will have an adventure. And maybe you can think of maybe a little adventure, a little mouse the size of this could have at your house. All right, so try your imagination and see what you can do. So next time, happy reading. Glad to have you back.